Perfect. Good. Uh, so we've done instructions. My name's John Horsley. Um, I am one of the technical support officers here at the BPCA. Uh, I've kind of been around in pest control for the last 10 years. Um, and uh, yeah, done everything from working as a technician uh, to I spent four years training, uh, a lot of level two and uh, sort of level three field barges, that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to talk about root cause today. Uh, we when it loads there we go so the agenda we're going to look a bit about rat and mouse behavior uh, mainly house, house mice and uh, the brown rat we're going to look at some common entry points uh, and how they link in with root cause and we're going to discuss look into sort of drainage issues and what we can do um, and i have put some helpful legislation in there as well so for issues that you are struggling with regarding root cause uh, there may be bits of legislation that you could use, um, especially for like neighboring properties and things like that. So we'll, we'll talk about them as we go through. So we're mainly going to talk about our commensal rodents. Uh, and the two common ones that we're going to treat are the house mice um, and the brown rat. Now, these both common uh, worldwide um, and they've spread over the last sort of 300 years, uh, especially the brown rat. And the house mice are more of a native species to the UK, uh, but they also are worldwide as well. So the brown rat, brown rats were introduced into the UK around 1700, early 1700, around 1724 was the first reported sightings. They have loads of different common names, uh, the Norway rat, uh, the common rat, the brown rat, the sewer rat. Um, it's all the same rat as the vegicus. And uh, yeah, they normally live outside in burrows. Now they construct these burrows and they live in communal groups. Uh, they can live in large numbers in sewers. And normally they're quite happy to live outside. Uh, they will find enough food outside, but they will enter buildings to find food uh, and also look for places to harborage as well. Now the house mice, uh, these mainly live indoors. Commensal, uh, commensal rodent, they sort of live around people um, and they use us to, to survive and thrive. Uh, the house mouse is mainly living indoors. So these uh, will move around, uh, but mainly living indoors and using us for food. Um, they will live in family groups uh, and they'll live in sort of social groups and females will share litters and things like that and they'll help each other out. They can be extremely adaptable. So house mice have been known to grow extra fur to live in places like freezers, and they do adapt very well to their environment. Because of their small body temperature, they tend to avoid water. Uh, so they won't stay in a, a wet or damp environment because they can get cold very quick. Uh, but other than that, they are very adaptable animals. Okay, biology and behavior. Uh, when I looked at the biology and behavior, I wanted to select bits that would be sort of um, keeping within the root cause issue. So biology and behavior that rodents use uh, that we sort of notice when we're dealing with like root cause. So their teeth. The teeth are as hard as steel. Now, the word rodent comes from the Latin name, uh, Latin word rodea, which basically means to gnaw. And a gnawing characteristic is for all rodents. Uh, they have this dentine on the inside, which is a white bit, and the enamel on the outside, which normally looks this sort of yellowy brown color. Uh, the dentine is softer than the enamel, so it wears away a little bit quicker, which keeps the teeth nice and sharp. As long as they continue to chew on a regular basis, their teeth will stay in good order. Um, uh, when I was working as a technician, uh, I always remember the first time I went into a warehouse um, and the mice in there had actually chewed through a concrete floor. And that was the first time that I'd seen uh, mice activity chewing through a concrete floor. Uh, they were chewing through that concrete to get into a cavity wall where the harbourage was. Um, but yeah, they, they do have this ability to chew through uh, concretes and soft metal such as brass and aluminium. Their climbing ability. <clears throat> uh, they are good climbers, uh, but they prefer to take the easiest route where possible. Uh, I was once working in a bank. Uh, they called us out for a rat that was in a computer. Um, when I got there, one of the staff was quite keen to show me. So she opened the door of this computer tower. Uh, this rat ran out and it actually climbed a painted sort of plaster wall. So quite a smooth surface. Um, and that was the first time I'd seen a rat climb up a, a smooth surface like that. Normally they do take uh, the easier route. But with that um, wall and it being uh, smooth because of that sort of flight or fight response, uh, they managed to, to screw up the wall and it was actually sat on the roof wall junction, just holding on to a bit of the roof tile. Um, and we actually had to get that out of there. 
Uh, they will shimmy up pipes. So they'll put their back against the pipe, the feet against the wall and sort of shimmy up the pipe in that way. And they can climb up the inside of pipes as well. It just so happens common pipes that are used in uh, buildings, uh, sort of 40 mil is your sink waste and your bath waste. And 100 mil is normally the size of a toilet waste pipe. So the pipes that we use in our buildings, they can climb up the insides of them. Uh, and if you've got open pipes or if you're having work done and the pipe is being left open, they can pass through there. A uh, good feature of toilets and sinks is the U-bend. That water trap obviously stops smells coming out of the, the drainage system, but it'll also stop rodents swimming through them. If they do swim through them, uh, they can sort of realize that that is a safe passage and they will do it sort of over and over again. But majority of times, them U-bends uh, will keep them out. The only time it becomes a problem it's if they've done it before or if you're having some work done um, and you've removed the toilet or the sink and that pipe is left open, uh, they could get out of the system through that way. So their ability to jump, uh, it always fascinates me when we talk about the jumping ability of rodents. And I've seen this on a little trail camera where they'd managed to jump over uh, some sticky boards that were put out on a treatment. But rats 75 centimetres from standing, mice 30 centimetres from standing. Rats will jump about 1.2 metres horizontally, which is, uh, you know, quite a large, um, it's four foot, so it's quite a large distance. Uh, and they will jump from, you know, aisle to aisle or from service to service. Now, <clears throat> they can drop off a building sort of 12 metres without sustaining injury. Mice 15 metres, that's sort of a five, six storey building. Uh, and they can fall that distance without sustaining any injury. Kinesis. So when we talk about kinesis, it's sometimes referred to as muscle memory. And this is how rats memorize their environment uh, through their muscle movements, a bit like counting steps. And they'll use this, it'll get ingrained. Uh, and say if you was in a, a warehouse and there was a box against the wall, it would run around that box uh, a number of times. It would ingrain that, mem that muscle memory into its uh, system and then if you used to remove the box it would still run around it as if it was still there it's quite uh, comical when you see it we, we've done it with trail cameras before and, and, and watched them do that um so that's how they memorize their environment through this muscle memory so if the environment stays the same they'll continuously use the same paths um and they'll memorize that environment if the environment's changing regular that can sometimes deter them uh, because they don't know where they're going or if it's safe um, they use this muscle memory to escape from predators mainly uh, and it gives them that split second response to be able to return to a burrow or a safe place uh, without having to think about it too much. So that's a bit about the bi biology uh, and behavior of rodents that um, we use when we talk about root cause, because these are the sort of things that, that they're going to use to get into properties um, or to memorize their property. So what is root cause? Now, um, I noticed Graham had a similar thing with a tree earlier, but a weed is a great analogy when we talk about root cause. You often hear people talking about digging into a problem or rooting out a problem, um, and it comes from this same sort of analogy. So when we look at root cause, it's all about explaining why and how a problem has happened. Uh, and hopefully, if we can explain that and we can understand that, we can prevent it from happening in the future. Majority of times in pest control, just getting rid of the problem or just getting rid of the rodents in this case um, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem entirely and we need to dig in a little bit more to that root cause find out where they're coming from or the reason they're there in the first place and then get rid of uh, uh, the root cause or solve the root cause through proofing so the weed is is great um when we talk about root cause the bit on the surface is what you can see so that's going to be the live rodents uh, it's going to be the drop-ins the smear max that sort of uh um Think of the word now, uh, that sort of physical evidence that you can find while you're on a site. Um, and the root cause, the root is a system. So it could be one or a number of different things that are allowing them rodents to be in that location, whether it's a food source access uh, through um, areas that need proofing, open doors, but there could be one or multiple uh, reasons for it to be coming up that route. If you were to just get rid of the problem, uh, a bit like if you chop the top off a weed, the weed still stays there. It takes a few weeks, but eventually it comes back. So long term treatment, finding that root cause uh, is going to be key. Um, and analysis basically just means to break it down. So root cause analysis, when we talk about analysis, it's just breaking down them, them root causes um, and sorting them issues out as you go through the treatment. Some proofing work is appropriate to do early on. 
So if they're coming from outside and getting inside, it may be appropriate to proof uh, them getting into a building. Other proofing work, mainly internally, um, you don't want to proof them early because you may just force the problem somewhere else or push it to a new location. Uh, it's sometimes better to control them there and then proof it uh, to stop it happening again in the future once the problem has been solved. So I mentioned it could be a series of reasons why rodents are there. Uh, and these next few slides will talk about the different reasons and how they sort of link together. So food, water, harborage, they're the three main things that rats and mice are going to be looking for. If you remove them from a habitat, chances are they will avoid being there um, and you can sort of move them on or prevent them from being there in the first place. Sometimes they are attracted to a property through a presence of a mate. So for breeding purposes and protection of predators. So things like low lying vegetation, um, debris buildup, you know, if they've got stored materials outside, they may be using them as a protection from predators uh, and they may give them safe routes between harborage and food sources. So when we talk about food, um, something that I put some little reminders in here, um, house mice uh, won't store food, so they won't cache food, whereas wood mice will. So if you go into a property and you've got stored food under, say, a kickboard and there's mouse droppings there, um, be mindful that wood mice may have stored that food there and it may not be a house mouse infestation. So just things to look out for when you're, you're carrying out your treatments uh, with, with stored food. So we're going to talk about some access points um, and rats, they need a gap 12 by 18 mil. So if there's a gap 12 by 18 mil, they'll be able to squeeze through it. If it's smaller than that, uh, they won't. And with your mice, six by nine and a half mil, um, they'll be able to squeeze through it. Now, when I've taught this to technicians in the past, um, we always use a pencil. A standard pencil is around six mil in size. Uh, and you could use that as a gauge uh, for the size of your hole if you've not got anything else to hand, as it were. Um, but good thing to know, 12 by 18 mil for rats, 6 by 9.5 mil for mice, um, they will be able to squeeze through that gap. So some common entry points for root cause then. For mice, things like gaps in brickworks, getting underneath doors, especially garage doors. I always remember this time of year, um, call outs would always increase for, for mice coming into a garage, nesting in bags and things like that. Um, so getting under garage doors is normally quite a common thing. Around pipe work, uh, so when they change services or if there are services added in the future, um, or it may just be that they've not sealed up when they've carried out the services in the first place, there could be gaps around there and that could allow rodents in. Wheat poles, these are a small little plastic uh, cap normally that's in the brickwork at damp course and above windows. Um, sometimes the plastic either gets pulled out or is chewed out and you can see inside there where the mice have been. Um, you'll often see droppings and bits of food where they've got into that cavity wall. Air bricks, obviously as construction has changed, they're now using plastic air bricks. Um, so they're easy for them to be chewed. You can get mice that are getting through them plastic air bricks. So just keep an eye out for that. Uh, gas and electric cupboards. Um, I had one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it had come in through uh, where the gas pipe enters the house. Um, a mouse had got in and uh, yeah, there was just some droppings underneath the gas meter. Um, so that is quite a common place for them to come through. Things that may exacerbate an infestation. So vegetation close to a building. Uh, if you've got vegetation close to a building, it will give them good cover. Uh, it may also provide them good transport routes between Harbridge and food locations, or if there's uh, you know, an area where they could get through, um, it may not be possible to see it for proofing if that vegetation is close to the buildings. Something that's quite common these days, connecting buildings, um, whether it's uh, warehouses or uh, terraced houses, Sometimes they are connected in some way uh, and you can get infestations that may cover a number of different properties. So looking for that root cause um, in that case is going to be really key because you're going to have to look at treating all the properties uh, and you're going to have to work out a way of doing that. And then for goods in, um, if you're having goods transported from distribution sites to um, you know, commercial shops, things like that. It may be that they're getting transported on them goods in. So checking that, finding the root cause, it may be that some treatment work needs to be done at the distribution center um, and also at the site where they're getting delivered to. So finding that root cause is going to be really key to break that pattern uh, and treat both locations. So for rats, 
Uh, I picked the common ones out for these. We could talk about entry points. Um, but I, I just kind of picked the common ones. Uh, so sewers and drains are normally quite common, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, gaps around pipes again, under floor voids, connecting buildings, um, overhanging vegetation, so trees and bushes and things that could come across from. If there's been property extensions, so depending on how the property extension is being built, depending on what it's being built on top of, that may cause a problem. Um, I've been to properties before where they've built extensions on top of drains, um, they've not sealed them, on prop sealed them off properly, uh, and the rodents have been constantly coming in from that location. Um, and neighboring properties, things like landfill sites. Um, there may be a food site that has a lot of food waste outside. Uh, that could be the source of the infestation, and then it could be coming from there to your site that you're looking after. So dealing with that root cause, um, speaking to the neighboring properties may be an option. Um, if not, uh, there is some legislation that can be used, which we will talk a bit later on if you are struggling. Um, but normally, if you talk to them, they're normally quite happy to uh, sort the problem out or work with you with that problem. So sewers. Um, there's two types of sewers. You've got your, your public sewers, which are in your uh, streets. Um, and they're normally the ones that are controlled by a water board of some sort. Um, they will carry out the service work. They also carry out maintenance work. And then you've got drains which connect from buildings, normally on private land, and they'll go from sort of houses uh, into the sewer network. The drains are the responsibility of the landowner normally. The sewers, the responsibility of the water board. Uh, one thing that I have come across in the past when we talk with, about sewers um, is if you have an inspection carried out by the water board, they're normally looking for a blocked pipe. So they won't tend to uh, flag up if there is a breach in the pipe or a gap or something like that. So you just have to be careful. And I've had it a couple of times where we've looked at footage that's been sent to us and you could clearly see where there was a breach in a pipe. Um, but because they're only looking for a blockage, it's not something that they would normally flag. So when you're dealing with public sewers, just be mindful of that if you're having inspections done. Drains, again, um, these are going to be privately owned. Uh, normally, it's the responsibility of the homeowner to sort the drains out if there is a problem. And nine times out of 10, uh, they will do something about that because it's in their interest. So how do we know we've got activity coming from drains? Uh, I put in there constant or regular rat activity. So um, I'll give you two scenarios where I've seen this. Constant activity, uh, I was looking after a shop and the rats were constantly coming in uh, near enough every night. Uh, and they were feeding off the bread inside that shop, dragging it back behind a freezer, storing it there, and then going back to the sewer network where they were quite happy to live. So that would be constant uh, issue with them rodents. Uh, and this went on for a few months because the actual broken pipe was underneath the building. It was quite difficult to get to. Um, and regular activity. So this could be uh, like an extension. There's been a property extended and there's an open drain under the extension. So you have activity, you control it. Um, it's not very clear where it came from because it's difficult to find that root cause. Uh, and that activity will regularly appear. So maybe every few months, uh, the property I looked after, um, it was normally once or twice a year. Uh, you would start to get rats coming out of that sewer network, infesting the property. Um, and yeah, it was a regular rat problem. Things to look out for, buildings, extensions, if they've had building work, um, if they've had new drains put in, if they've moved the drainage network. So sometimes, uh, you know, if they're building a garage or something, they'll move the drainage network uh, and reroute it. These sort of things, um, nothing ever goes back together how it was taken apart sometimes, uh, and it can be quite difficult to make it all fit properly once it's been moved. Um, so look out for that. Uh, Unsuitable building materials, things um, like expanding foam being used. I once lifted a manhole, and when I looked up the side of the manhole where this extension had been built onto the side of the manhole, that actually filled the void with expanding foam, and the rats had just chewed through, chewed through that, got into the cavity wall, uh, and then infested this particular house. And look out for subsidence. So if you've got drains that have subsided, they're a little bit wobbly maybe, there is soil missing from the edges, could be an indication that rodents are, are digging out from that sewer network. Um, and the normal indication for that would be that you'd find burrows and there'd be no soil around that burrow. So all the soil has been dug from the inside out um, and it'll be in the drain or it had been washed away through that drainage system. So inspection techniques for drains, I mentioned earlier, cameras, that's the sort of most common one these days. 
Uh, you can use footage uh, to show your clients where the problems is. There's also dyes. Dyes are really good if you've got sort of a breach in the pipe. Things that dyes won't tell you is um, how much water you're losing through that breach. So you see that bottom left-hand picture, uh, you can see the dye flowing out the middle between the two pipes. There's a breach in that pipe somewhere um, and the dye is coming out. It's quite an early primitive thing, dyes, uh, but it is still useful, especially for places where you can't get cameras if there's a, an awkward pipe. Um, and I know Davey from uh, the Rat Detectives, uh, Rat Detection, sorry, he did a really good presentation on the last forum on drains. So if you want a really in-depth drain presentation, uh, there is that one on there. So legislation regarding drains then. There is the Public Health Act 1961. This is all to do with uh, drainage networks and how they are managed. Um, if you've got a stopped up drain, which basically means a block drain or a drain that has some sort of obstruction, normally under the Public Health Act, they'll give you a 48 hour notice to rectify that. Um, obviously, uh, I put this in because it's important if you ever have an issue where someone uh, reports you or if you needed to act on a, a neighbouring property where they weren't dealing with a drainage issue. This is something that you could use. Um, and for private drains, they have to be kept in good condition and uh, any disused drains need to be sealed off or open drains capped. Normally for that sort of work, um, they're given a seven day notice uh, to solve them problems. So what do we do if it's a root cause for a neighboring property? Now, you could have many different root causes from neighboring property, whether it's a food site, landfill site, whether it's just a neighboring house as a buildup of debris, maybe coming from a shed, someone's bird feeder. There's a lot of ways that uh, rodents would be attracted from a neighboring property. Now, majority of the time, going to speak to that neighbor um, normally prompts uh, a response. They don't want the rodent issue and they obviously don't want it affecting uh, their neighbor as well. So that is normally a good way uh, to go about it. Just speak to the neighbors uh, or speak to the neighboring uh, commercial site. Explain to them what you found, what you think is happen, uh, happening, and then they will uh, help you hopefully with that infestation. If they don't, what are your options? Things like large buildup of waste. Uh, fly tipping, that kind of stuff. If you have a problem with that, then Prevention Direct Pest Act 1949 is a really good act that you can use. Now, this is only for local authorities uh, and only for rats and mice. Um, so local authorities have a duty to keep their district free of rats and mice. How do they do that? Well, they carry out uh, periodic inspections. So they make sure that properties don't have rats and mice. They will then destroy rats and mice that they find on them properties, and they can enforce private property owners to control rats and mice on their land as well. Normally done for a notice period, so they'll give you a notice. You get seven days to comply with that notice, uh, and majority of times that happens. If it's not complied with, um, they can then instruct a, a pest controller or if they have their own pest control to carry out the work um, and then uh, charge the customer back for it, uh, the work that was carried out. And like I said, this can also be used for waste. So if you've got a neighboring property that has uh, like a large buildup of waste um, or the waste is being a problem, uh, you can use it to have that waste removed. Um, and they'll normally bring in a van, remove it, and then charge the occupier back. Uh, and that's something I've seen happened uh, quite a lot of regarding waste. Cool. Any questions? Oh, time and John. Me, oh, can you hear me? Yep. I, I bet most people wish they could put a mute button on me uh, nine, nine times out of ten. <laughs> I mean, about the drains, is it? Do you think like there's a there's a gap in the industry for providing like good drains? I know Davy at Rat Detection does it, but you know he can't do the whole country all day long. But I don't know. Do you think it's a gap? Uh, I think uh, the, the drainage issue is probably more the private and public bit that is the problem because if you are working on a private drain, um, mm. water boards don't normally like you to sort of start interfering with their drainage network so that you normally have to apply to work in a, a public sort of sewer area. Um, so maybe that disconnect is sometimes a little bit difficult to, um, to overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, dra drains is quite a common thing. Um, but I think it's this not looking for a problem, looking for a blockage is, especially in, in what I've come across, mm -hmm. um, that's been more of the, the issue is that whoever is doing the drain survey um, is looking for a blockage when they've not found one, they've kind of reported it as fine. Um, that seems to be a common uh, occurrence. Mm 
Common occurrence, yeah, absolutely. I know I, I think you probably do as well, but I certainly get lots of calls, you know, of persistent rat problems in properties where they're predominantly in the in the roof, for example, cavities in the attic. And, you know, pest controllers don't always think, actually, I need to spend some more time on the drains maybe and have a look at why they're there. It can be just a firefighting thing that's going on with traps or whatever. But yeah, looking at that root cause and well, why are they there can solve most problems, can't it? Yeah. I, and a lot of that is like speak with your customers. Um, I remember one particular house I went into and uh, I was doing some training with a new technician and um, I went into the, to the house and then I had a rat issue for a couple of years and this, it was this periodic, it was every few months I'd get a problem, mm-hmm. mainly coming from the garage and they couldn't understand why that was because it was just a concrete box, basically. Mm. Um, and then when I spoke to the homeowner, I said, have you had any work done? He said, we had a brand new kitchen fitted. Um, I said, what did they do the old drainage network? And he was like, oh, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, and it actually, I forget how much it cost him, but they'd had the whole kitchen taken out because of this rat problem. It happened not long after they had this kitchen fitted. So that kind of draws mm-hmm. up a red flag um so we had to do a bit of investigating it turns out when we looked at the manhole at the back of the house uh, there was a branch that went off under the garage which we believe was an old toilet um that had not been capped off mm-hmm. uh, and that's just where they were coming out from so if you speak to the customer they may have some information to point you in the right direction yeah, good stuff. Um, someone's put a, a question in the Q&A, but I'm not sure what it's about, but it says yeah, sewer baiting. I'm guessing they wanted to have a chat about sewer baiting. I mean, again, it's not really root cause, but is it something you see happening? Do you, you recommend or? Um, normally with sewers, they live in the sewer network. You know, they exploit it as an easy way to get around. Um, it's good harborage for them because it's really protected from predators. It's very, mm-hmm. le- very unlikely to be disturbed and it gives them good access um, through, uh, you know, uh, there's, there is points where they'll be able to exit the system if they need to uh, for things like flooding and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're quite happy to live in sewers. Uh, they're going to be there um, anyway. If you're going to sewer bait, is it going to get rid of the problem? Are you better off proofing it um, and solving that root cause as to why they're coming out of the sewer system? And mm-hmm. normally with a lot of the jobs that I've done, um, things like caravan parks and stuff, if there is a breach in the sewer network, it, it will allow uh, rodents to come out. So dealing with that breach is probably mm-hmm. more appropriate than um, just putting bait in a burrow if, if they're just going to get more activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may need to do both. Um, if you need to to control, um, you know, an infestation that's in a particular network, maybe. But um, yeah, dealing with that that root cause, dealing with that that breach in the pipe is probably going to be the better way to go. Yeah, um, Matt's but uh, uh, Matt Greenwood's Garwood, sorry, has put a comment in the chat saying that in his experience, ninety percent of the time, rats in residential properties down to the waste system defects, and um, he puts uh, treatment into cavities to kill the rats. Um, uh, noting the utilities can be damaged, etc., he then recommends a. Uh, he recommends a guy that's uh, close to him um, that deals with drains and, and does it. So yeah, a lot of people out there do experience issues, but sometimes it's tricky for them to know where to go, who to call, you know, the water board or private company or you yeah. know, uh, get that experience themselves. But yeah. Um, and it, just to explain to him what you're looking for, because, you know, these guys do surveys day in, day out for blockages and things. Um, if they've just had a job to, can you go survey this drain? It may be that, whoever's coming to do the survey just think oh it's another blockage or that's the issue um so you know if you can explain to the utility company that we've had a rodent issue um and this is what we're looking for then there may be you know a, a bit more understanding and it, mm. might, it might just be that disconnect in the past when i've had it because normally they'll come out and do the surveys at night um when sort of no one's there obviously it's safer lifting manholes and mm. things like that for them um so yeah it may just be that that communication is, is key Great. Good stuff. Perfect time. And that's the questions done. There's lots of thank yous in there as well and very informative. So yeah, John, thank you for that. And um, yeah, uh, welcome to the BBCA forums as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, John, take care. Yes, thank you.